Welcome to No FOMO Charts YouTube channel. Today is Saturday, July 25th, 2020. In this channel, I talk about stock charts and technical analysis. Disclaimer, these videos and charts are for educational purposes only. This is not financial advice. Please remember to click subscribe and turn on notifications for new videos. Let's start with the DJI Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. All right, so we just ended week two of Q2 earnings. Week two of Q2 earnings is now over. So let's see what happened in the past week for this market, the Dow Jones Index. So I already do this for another class, but right here, in the past week since July 17th, all right, basically this is what happened, just a rally and then a pullback. But what's notable is there's a double top right here. You see that in the price? Hit it three times, rejected at around 27,040 range. So basically that's an M, okay? That's enough. Two points is enough to call a resistance level, so I'm going to call that. All right, so now we fell back down to support right here, 26,469. Do you see this, this yellow line? All right, so what could happen here? Bullish scenario, if it happens, bullish scenario is just bounce off here and possibly just easily test right here, okay? It's possible in the bullish scenario. In a bearish scenario, look at all this room we have down to pull back, all right? So there is support level right here at like, let's mark it 26,044, 25,704, and then the big one down here at 25,000, all right? I'll just mark this one too, 26,440, current support. So if we zoom out a little bit though and just do some trend analysis, okay? So in the previous March rally, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, that's fine up to here, but then this is not fine over here. You notice we're not making a higher high. We need to go up here if we're gonna keep the uptrend intact. Just the fact that we're consolidating sideways right here is market weakness to me. It's market hesitation, indecision, people being a little bit more cautious and rightly so it's the q2 earnings one of probably one of the going to be one of the most volatile earnings probably in a long time so we just want to watch out for that just remember okay stocks is they're not all about technical charts we have to factor in excuse me we have to factor in the fundamental news and the government news and also global news all right so let's move on here Next, S&P 500, the SPX. All right, so what are all these lines over here? So let's zoom in. It's a very similar chart in terms of psychology, price psychology, but there's three resistance levels up here. We hit the first one, and then it stopped. There was, I'm going to call this a double top or triple top, right here at 3280. You see this? Let's mark it. 3280 right there. You see that? A little bit of rally on the breakout, okay? Then... Resistance, yes, there's resistance in this zone. This whole zone is resistance on the price. And pullback. So now, let me clean this up a little bit. I'm going to leave the yellow lines though, so we just remember. Okay, there is support right here at 3,198. Then the next key area of support is 3,146. Right here, see that? Look how many touch points this has. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the bottom. Then, not much. Maybe one right here at 37 or 30, 3,071, excuse me, then 3,000. So I'll, I'll leave those marked. But these yellow lines are generally the area that I just like to mentally write down on the charts. So again, rally, pullback. Also notice there's a trend line here. Do you see this? Secret trend line. Let me see if I could move it around so you can see it. Right there, you see that? Secret trend line. And it works. Support, support support resistance see that support 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 turned into resistance turned into resistance so that's another key lesson where support can become resistance regardless of if, if it's trend line up or if it's a horizontal support same idea happens all right so let's get bullish and bearish target bullish target is this all-time high over here in this price range all right so these three levels this right here is the bullish target because we could bounce off the support, right? And try to make a higher high. Where would the higher high be? 3,328 right there is the target. I'll just circle it for next time. 
Okay, then downside target and immediate downside target would be right here. So that's 3,148. Okay, and then the ultimate bearish target to break all of these support levels would be down here at 3,000. Still circled right there. So we just want to watch out for that. Next up, NASDAQ, IXIC, NASDAQ, IXIC. Okay, so this is the big one. All right, so I'm not going to go over this because we already have these past early months on previous videos, but let's zoom into what happened in this market. All right, so in the past week, look, huge double top, huge double top. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this. And I marked it the previous time. You see this yellow line? Okay, why did I mark that spot? Well, there is already this right here, that candle. So it came to test that resistance, the market price, then it got rejected. Okay, so huge M, boom, boom, boom. Right, if you want to get really into technical analysis, measure the M. Measure the M from close to close. Somewhere around 4.5%, okay? Did it come back down 4.5%? Yes, so that first measurement is done. Second measurement, 4.5% would be this yellow line right here in a previous level of support, all right? So this could be the bullish, I mean, excuse me, this could be the bearish downside target if we keep seeing weakness in the NASDAQ because it's at support right now. It just bounced off support, which is 10,250 right here. But again, it's the NASDAQ. NASDAQ bulls don't like to give up so easily, in my experience. So we could see consolidation. Look at this. It's like a perfect consolidation range because it just gets stuck in here for like another two weeks if the bulls do not want to give up. But again, the bears right now have a little bit more momentum in their favor. Because think of what happened with tech. If you've been following the stocks, if you've been following the news, just had the Bears just had their almighty um, win just yesterday, two days ago. All right. So I'm talking about this this downside leg right here. Bears winning. But again, I don't want to get too biased. That's why that's what helped me helps me survive as a trader, as an analyst, is to not get too biased and don't listen to too many other people right? So just listen to the charts and the price action for most of the time. So right here, again, bullish target. I'm just going to call a bullish target this topside resistance of 10,823. Let's circle that for next time. Okay. Immediate support again right here is somewhere in the 10,250 range. Downside bearish target number one is 98.23. Then downside bearish target number two, this support you see right here in this yellow line, 9,500. So we'll just see what happens right? But we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves because this reaction is based off earnings. So let's see how earnings goes. All right. Russell 2000 index, RUT. Okay. So I uh, already went over this part in the past. Okay. So it's consolidating. It was consolidating in a tightening range. I just call it a symmetrical triangle myself. All right. Then we had the breakout. Then we had some consolidation to the side again and attempted rally, which failed for one day, right? But let's call it, there is resistance right here at 1,500 up there and one down here, 1,496. Basically, it's just this right here as the resistance. So this is not that great because again, for trend, we need a higher high. We need to go up here. We need to go to 1,608. So if this resistance at 1,546 is still holding like that, right? And we're actually getting stuck right here. The momentum has stopped and slowed down a little bit. So again, bullish target to the upside right here, 1,536. Bearish target, okay? There's two. I'm going to call this support because it has so many touch points over here, 1,450. Right, so this bullish target, bearish target number one, and then bearish target number two, I'm gonna say just estimating visually somewhere right here like a triangle test. Somewhere around 1,420, let's mark it. Somewhere around 1,420. All right, so again, let's not get too excited just because we see some kind of dirty upside down head and shoulders, don't, don't, FOMO, no FOMO. All right, let's try to speed it up, VIX, VIX, all right, why did I, this looks like chicken scratch. Why did I do this? Okay, so first, first, let's get resistance levels 
up above. 33, 36, 40, 44, just rounding very fast. Support, 25, 22, uh, 18. Where did I get these levels? From the left side over here, but I'm zoomed in. So again, the VIX still continuing its downtrend, but we get pops of volatility. We get pops of volatility up. So what did I say is the support level in the past? So previously, right here, this line of 2420, and it hit exactly. Come on. Are you serious? Technical, technical analysis works, everybody. Not 100%, 100%, but it works. So right here, see that? Support, support, support. Therefore, this is also support touch point. Three times, then the bounce. But volatility bringing us back down. This is a downtrend though, so don't get too excited. Okay? But it is at double bottom support over here, which is notable. Notable. Again, the top side resistance, 33. Support, 1 at 24. But also support 2 at 22. Okay, support three at 18, these yellow lines. So we're just going to leave it there. If the VIX is going to bounce, if the S&P is going to crash or pull back, we have a lot of room to go. There's a lot of room to go to make this lower high. Uh, there's like 25%, all right? So again, but also to the downside, there's 25%. So you want to see what's going to happen with earnings. Next, the big story, the big story this week, gold, gold. Did I not call this? Did I not call this? 1840. See that circle right there? And we go a little bit higher. But again, gold in the in its yearly uptrend for like a year, right? But again, the analysis works. When I said, I think almost like a month ago, when this is in tightening range, when it's in tightening range, all right, you might see a breakout and that's exactly what happened. The higher highs, higher lows continued. Okay, where did we bounce off from? Boom, right here. You see the top of this channel? Right there, I'll draw in the yellow. See the top of that channel? Right there at 1800. Hesitation at 1800, but then peep some people buying gold as a safe haven or and some people just buying gold to make money, right? Traders. Okay, bullish breakout. All right, don't get surprised about this. This is like, if you've traded for a while, this is totally normal. Because when you get a consolidation like that and it's hesitating here and then you get the break, of course, where's the next obvious resistance level? Somewhere up here, whole numbers, 18. So we hit 1900 now. All right, what's next? Somewhere Next target, 1950 bullish, 2000. 2000 could be a nice, no, nice bullish target for gold. But if earnings surprise, right, or government Federal Reserve changes in the next one or two weeks, then we might see a pullback down where to where 1830 possible possible support one okay circle I'm just gonna circle the resistances above for next time then possible support number two 1800 possible support number three back down here to the middle heart line 1750 so again don't get too excited about gold don't get too excited okay when you have a gold rally breakout just think about the psychology if stocks are risky where are people going to pull out their money and put it into you? Because most, most hedge funds, let's see, most hedge funds, institutional traders, big banks, right? They're not going to just pull their money out and then do nothing with it. They're going to hedge. They're going to go long. They're going to go short. They want something to go green. They want something to go red, right? Or in the worst case, like they'll put in bonds or something. But most people are not doing that. They want to make money. It's time to make money, right? Or that's what people's goals are. Next, actually, let's add on silver, okay? So let's add on silver because that was the big one too. So let's see, is there an OANDA? Uh, let's see, it should be XHEUSD, right? Let's get the OANDA one up there, yep. Okay, so silver as well. You know what, I never really um, charted this one, so let's chart it. So first thing I would do is try to zoom out as far as possible so you get an idea about silver. All right, so here's a perfect example. So here's a lesson. Okay, so if you just look, how do we mark support and resistance? Well, what has the most touch points? Support right here at 1381. 
Okay, there was a resistance at 1984 right here so look just think about the psychology you hit this support and you pull back way down in march boom then in april this is a monthly chart see this kind of like a kicker candle then boom 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 up boom boom resistance breakout all right it's not impossible for this to happen so where's the next resistance target 26 right there for silver okay then the super resistance target 34 45 all the way up here then you know 43 then just mark it 48 all the way up there Downside support targets, eleven twenty six, nine dollars These are really, really big long-term targets. Excuse me, big long-term targets. So again, just zoom back in to a weekly chart, then zoom back into a daily chart. So I'm just going to focus on since the corona crash. All right, there's probably another resistance over here on the left side. Yeah, so there's another one, like $25, $25 are targets. All right, so, but... How do we know this thing is going to go up? Okay, so now then we can use trend lines. So here, right here, you see that? Look at it, riding the trend line. Okay, that is not that is not random. It's not random for silver. Okay, not random for silver. So this, could, this is debatable. How many other top side trend lines? You could do this one. There's also one here, like this. There's like a triangle. You see that? This one would make more sense. This one makes more sense. All right, so I'm, I'm going to erase this one for now to give the example. So this one makes more sense because it's a ascending triangle pattern right there. See this? Ascending triangle pattern. And what happens when you get multiple touch points like this? And then you see some volume. When you see a little bit of volume, it's like just a little bit. This one was notable. Volume starting to increase, all right? With the breakout sideways, then a little hesitation, then boom, right here. Boom, 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 boom. Because everyone's like, wait a second. It takes a little bit of time for the market to react to be like, whoa, 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 with silver. What's going on with silver? Boom. Okay. So again, a little bit of consolidation on the on the daily chart. But again, what matters more is what's the trend for silver? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. This is the higher high. It's forming a higher high right now. It's saying how high it could go. Then after that happens, let's say if it even touches 25, possible, right? Where would the higher low be? You can have a higher low all the way down to like $20 and you're still fine, right? This thing could go boom up here and then pull back to here and you're still fine in a big uptrend. But then it has to break out to like 20, 30 to maintain an uptrend, all right? So again, let's mark these targets. Upside bullish target, excuse me, is 25. Downside bearish target is 20. Very simple, very simple. Don't FOMO, no FOMO. All right, very quickly, the last couple of ones here. DXY, the dollar index. So interesting, the dollar index falling. Okay, so again, this is a psychological sentiment indicator, but also it's it's the dollar versus a basket of cur uh, global currencies, about six of them, approximately. So what's the psychology here? Well, we lost the support level, okay? So again, maybe people are selling their dollars right so they're giving up their dollars and they're buying something else in the market what what did they buy possibly gold and silver possibly possibly some stocks depending on what's happening right but look we the dollar index lost these support levels so what's the next one support levels at 90 373 9310 9231 right so again it's kind of we lost that double bottom air area over here see that so now it's below that so now i'm looking for down here if it recovers then i'm looking for up here 95 between for as a bullish target then 94 as a bearish target all right let's let's speed this up bitcoin usd all right bitcoin again in my opinion because quickly look at oil yeah so in my opinion because gold and silver are rallying bitcoin is rallying again i'm not going to call bitcoin the safe haven it's it's not really yet okay maybe someday it will be i mean i like crypto but just let's be realistic right now it's not the safe haven that everyone thought it was but still going from back here like a month ago from 8835 all the way up to here right now 9676 a nice 7% rally but again why do we flip because it was in a downtrend but then tightening range and then it made a higher low 
Okay, so just drawing, you could draw it as a symmetrical triangle like that too, with the breakout. A little bit of volume, okay? Very subtle. It's very subtle, but what's more obvious is this big green candle right there. So again, my long-term analysis on Bitcoin, okay? If you, if this is the first time you're watching this video, long-term analysis, it's on my trading view, all right? So long-term, there's these three-year long trend lines almost, okay? So Bitcoin has to break out. If it's going to go bullish this year, it has to break out and break through 10,000 and hold. So again, scenario, bullish scenario number one is breakout, test the resistance, then break through to the upside. Okay, multiple upside targets. If it doesn't work and we break down to the downside, have a resistance test, then break down, then it's probably gonna hit 7,000, probably gonna hit 6,000. In a really bad uh, bearish selling scenario, could go back to 4,000, 3,000. It's there. You see this box down here? It's there. The price level's there. So again, don't get too biased with Bitcoin. Don't get too biased. Because you're going to get wrecked sometimes if you're on the wrong side of that trade. All right, so USO, USO, US oil. Again, because remember, just rewind to the silver index, or excuse me, the silver Forex chart, right? U.S. oil, what does it look like? Ascending triangle. That doesn't mean it's going to go sky high, but this upside target and this downside breakdown target is still there. Oil's different. It's a commodity, okay? The contango is still in play. Demand and supply, right? OPEC, JM, JMMC meetings, global import-export data still matters for oil, okay? So it's not as hyped as gold and uh, Bitcoin can get. But again, the upside break break out target for me can be still 15% plus upside and maybe 15% to the downside. All right, but this is drawing out. This is kind of expanding out. But this essential pattern is still, the psychology is still there. Nobody really knows. It's just tightening and tightening. So basically, when something happens fundamentally, news-wise, then we're probably going to see oil break break out or break down. All right, natural gas. Interesting. Natural gas. All right, so what happened on natural gas here? We had this previous ugly inverse, excuse me, ugly upside down inverse head and shoulders, right? Boom to the breakout, pull back test, failed, break down a little more, and notably finding support. Where do we find support? And 950, 950 support, right? Then a rally, then a rally. So the energy sector, let's see. Let's quickly look. Look at this. XLE, energy sector with a bounce. Okay? So that's not random. Natural gas is bouncing. All right? So, again, bullish targets. Okay, there's a resistance up here at 1117. Resistance at the top. Okay, I'm going to call support down here. So now it's kind of stuck in a consolidation channel. See this? Right? Stuck between here and here. So bullish target, if this continues, there's a trend line also up here, resistance. So maybe $11 is the target. I'm going to raise the old target. And let's put some targets right here. $11 right here. Support target to the downside would be $940. All right, very simple, very simple. Okay, so before we end, let's add in Ethereum USD. Uh, let's just use the Bitstamp one. Because Ethereum... is kind of like the silver of crypto, right? So Ethereum, here we go. Just quick, let's get quick support and resistance levels. All right, so Ethereum, look at this. Monthly, this could be a giant monthly W pattern for Ethereum, possible, right? So we got support right here. We had a resistance level right here. We just kind of broke out above it. Next resistance, 357.78. Let's look at a weekly for some more information. Then maybe the next resistance, 509. Then these huge FOMO resistances, like 778, 927, 1,234, 1,382. It would be nice if we go there, right? If you're a bull, that's what we want to see. But again, silver, I mean, uh, <laughs> Ethereum looking very similar to the silver chart is what I'm trying to say. So the trend line, look at this, trend line. It's not perfect. This trend line actually makes more sense. Support, 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 lose it, test it. Okay, there's like a little baby trend line support right here. Then the breakout, all right? So there was kind of this, again, 
like a ascending triangle pattern right here you see that into a consolidation but the psychology was there just a little bit of weakness but we, since we see gold and silver breakout we're seeing ethereum breakout as well same with bitcoin so what's the upside target media upside target for ethereum up here is 356 dollars media support 284 then you can fall back all the way down to here and still be in a higher higher high higher low uptrend pattern 246 right so these are the three levels to watch out for all right don't fomo though don't fomo because if you're long right I mean, it depends on if you're a trading or investor, right? But just don't FOMO, right? Don't follow other people just, just because everyone's going that way. All right, everyone. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video. Remember to click subscribe, hit the like button, turn on notifications for new videos. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great week. See you next time.